intuition is definitely this mystic thing that you can't really describe it, but you can feel it. And you need to spend time there to see like how it moves, how, how everything works in there, because every day it will be different. Every hour it will be different. It's a living thing. So to really feel it, you gotta be present and you gotta be there. so lucky we have this planet and it has life on it which is absolutely amazing and call it divine will call it the product of incredible probability whatever it is we have a planet again with life on it which is super unique because we haven't found another planet about which we can say the same they are in our homes, augmenting our comforts, serving our needs. Plastic, plastic, plastic. With new uses, there arise new wants. New wants mean new markets, new prosperity, your new frontier. The future of plastics is bright indeed. At least 8 million metric tons of plastics leak into the sea every year, which is the equivalent to dumping contents of one rubbish truck into the ocean every minute. New report says plastic will outweigh fish in the oceans by 2050. Waste plastic, which all too often ends up in the ocean. Researchers say the Arctic Ocean has become the last stop for plastic waste dumped into the seas, and trash is now piling up in the once pristine waters. 500 sea lions dead, possibly after eating tons of plastic. I see plastic pollution everywhere. It's one of those things that you don't notice until someone points it out to you and then you can't stop seeing it. It's every corner, every piece of plastic someone throws away, every packaged food item that you know is going to be thrown away after one use. It's every beach, it's every sidewalk, it's every street, it's every garbage can, it's everything. Looking at the rate that humanity is manufacturing and producing and consuming plastic, this non-biodegradable, everlasting garbage, it's, it's obviously insane, and it's increasing. And the question is, how are we gonna turn this ship and change our behavior on a collective level? So any of those single-use plastics that you use once and then dispose of can end up in the marine environment and then harm ocean life. We're finding more and more that uh, as plastics break down, they never really get recycled, but they break down into smaller and smaller bits. And those very small plastic bits enter our environment and can be ingested by us through our water supply or our food. They can bioaccumulate up the food web, so when a small fish eats a tiny piece of plastic and a bigger fish then eats that small fish, they're gonna accumulate those plastics within their bodies. In addition, if animals ingest this plastic, um, it can completely uh, impact their stomach, uh, making them unable to eat, and then they slowly starve to death, which is a pretty miserable way to go. Sometimes we have whales washing up on beaches dead, and we don't know until we get into the necropsy, into the animal autopsy, and open up the stomach, and then sometimes we find very large amounts of plastic. Um, sometimes those pieces of plastic are small enough to actually go into the intestines, and if that happens, and it becomes very infected, and then that usually leads to death. Unfortunately, we see about 10% of our animals here at the Marine Mammal Center are impacted by plastic. One case that comes to mind in particular is a California sea lion that we named Thin Mint. And we could see that Thin Mint had a very 
thin layer of monofilament around his neck and it was cutting so deeply and had been there for so long that his skin was actually growing over it. It was a very thin line, but it's so incredibly strong that every time he would move, it would just cut deeper and deeper. And because he wasn't fully grown, he was still growing into it. If there's one thing that I could say that I, I brought away from my experience being with the birds on Midway Island, it's something that really changed the way I see everything. And I discovered in the process of being with albatrosses, seeing them die as their bodies are filled with plastic, I discovered that I loved them. It's like my love for them was revealed rather than created. One of the things that was so difficult to bear about being on this incredibly remote island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean was that every time we opened up a dead albatross, we found plastic inside of it. And in that way, it was so much of a reflection of us. Maybe some of my trash has ended up in the ocean, and so I feel sad, but you know, this is the reality that we have to face. It comes from all of us and it impacts all of us. We don't act when people tell us to. We act when we're inspired, when we feel something, when we feel angry, or when we feel frightened about our future, or when we get sad enough about what's being lost in our world. Then we act all over the world. There's all kinds of really interesting change being made around the way we consume plastic. And some of the most effective activism is going on in legislatures and governments who are now banning single-use disposable plastics. On average, Americans use 500 million straws per day. So if we can skip the straw, even just one straw throughout your day, it's gonna have a great impact. Additionally, if people are willing to take that next step, you know, other than uh, reducing their single-use plastics. If they want to take that next step, then they should really uh, work in their communities to take action. So things like participating in beach cleanups or voting for legislation that actually creates change in infrastructure. So an example of that would be banning the bag, which we accomplished in California, which is amazing. Um, and who knows, in the future, if we keep talking about this and having these conversations, then maybe we'll ban the straw, ban um, the bead, other plastics that can end up in the environment. The problem of ocean plastic pollution, the very beginning of the problem is in our mind. It's in our consciousness, in, in our culture. And that's really, to me, where the, the, there's the most transformational juice right now in terms of activism is simply to shift the way we think and feel about things like plastic and and on a collective level if, if we can achieve that then everything changes. I started out you know as a youth involved with this at least passionate about it and I thought people would listen to me and so I realized that especially at schools starting through schools and getting into the larger community there is a big interest in youth voice and we matter. And so God acknowledge that, God acknowledge your power. It's never too late to start. And if we face it together, we can overcome it. We can bring to light for everybody how serious this issue is because it's no longer just adults talking about it. It's also the youth of the country.
So as young people, we're in a difficult position because we've kind of inherited this mess that we did not create, but our futures and that of our posterity is completely dependent on our ability to undo the damage that generations before us have done. That's what I think youth and activists and youth in general across the nation have a responsibility to do, is recognize that it's not just the adults that have a responsibility to, to kind of rectify this problem, but that uh, when this problem is really going on and going down, and when we're feeling the effects, it's actually us youth that will decide whether or not these effects will continue or get worse. I don't want the legacy of the human race to be a group that just took something so amazing and destroyed it instead of protecting it and appreciating it. When you look at billions of years from now, nothing that we do in our lives really will matter, but if we have taken one of the few planets potentially in the entire universe that have life and destroyed it, that's, that's not the legacy I want us to have left.